Well, it means he doesn't have to have a nervous breakdown right now, Steph. He can have it in December, January, and February. <clears throat> Let's understand, all this is doing is postponing things. And it's setting up a bunch of conditions that are going to be very hard, if not impossible, to meet. And they'll have to go through another crisis. <clears throat> the, the deal would have the budget conferees come up with something by December 13th. Couldn't do that after Bull Simpson. Couldn't do that with a super committee. Couldn't do that this year. I'm not sure why they're going to do it in the next uh, eight weeks. Uh, and then the budget, the government shutdown would open up again uh, in January. The debt ceiling, uh, as Phil said, in late, in late February. So it's good. We're going to avoid a crisis now, but there are going to be subsequent crises coming up. Then does anyone seem resolved at all? Earlier when we spoke to Republican Congressman Kevin Brady from, uh, from Texas, he almost had a sad tone to his voice. I think the Republican Party, at least much of the Republican Party in Washington, is sad every moment now because it's total chaos. Uh, Democrats probably are, should be sadder than they are because it's reflecting on all of government right now, Stephanie. But the Republicans are really in total, complete disarray. I've never seen anything like this, even going back to Watergate times. Uh, they have really? different blocks. They don't like each other. They don't talk to each other. Uh, and I don't think that's going to end. You haven't seen a tone like this since Watergate times. Are you for real? I'm, you know, I'm for real. That was before you were born, I know, but I'll tell you about it someday. It really was. Uh, I mean, back then, a consensus was, you know, eventually formed. Uh, here, I see no prospect for a consensus forming. There's a consensus to get out of this current crisis. But I don't think anyone says, okay, we really screwed up this time. Things haven't worked well. We've hurt ourselves. The Republican Party's rating is at an all-time low. We can't do this again. I, I don't think people are saying, so therefore, we're going to do A, B, or C, because they don't know what A, B, or C is. Al, Republicans themselves are saying we screwed up. Our colleagues talked to Lindsey Graham, the senator from South Carolina yesterday, and those words are exactly what he used, screwed up. Uh, and, and he was... Uh, frustrated that the Democratic Party hadn't reached out offering some kind of a helping hand. Given the fact that things have played out or appear to be playing out the way that they do, does anybody come out of this looking good? Well, it depends on who's looking at them, Eric. Lindsey Graham thinks the Republican Party screwed up. Uh, we can probably agree on that. But, you know, if you talk to Michelle Bachman, uh, if you talk to uh, uh, Stephen King, they probably will say the Republican Party, they will say the Republican Party didn't screw up. That's that great divide there. But, but and, is I mean, Michelle Lindsay Bachman looking at the polling numbers? Well, they would say polling, or sh you know, I'm going to give you their polling, answer, polling, Stephanie. Not is that, that what I you're going to say? Po well, polling is a snapshot. It's a glimpse at the moment, and if you're in a long-term fight, that you can ultimately win it. That's the view of the Tea Party Republicans. They are not an insignificant part of the party. Uh, again, a lot of people in Washington don't like it. They think they've done, uh, you know, just terrible harm. Uh, but I don't think we, 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 we should lull ourselves into thinking that that faction is going to go away, because it's not. So what happens next time? I should point out, Al, that uh, the Dow Jones industrials are up more than 200 points right now. Uh, but come January, if in fact this uh, Senate bill uh, extends the, um, you know, the open, reopens the government until early January, should we expect that the Tea Party uh, will once again uh, maneuver in such a way that the government gets shut down? I think John Boehner is going to, John, John, John Boehner doesn't have enough feet uh, for that fire that they have waiting for him, uh, Eric. Uh, the, first, the first deadline will be sometime in December where the budget conferees, regular order, are supposed to come up with something. I would be shocked if they do, even though all of us know the outlines of what has to be done. You have to cut back on entitlements, you have to replace the sequester, and you have to add more revenues. That's all right, really but what, what, okay, Al, what's the, we all know what needs to be done. What's the reality that any of that gets done in a significant way. Let's be honest. Somewhere between none and slim, Stephanie, and that's being an optimist. <laughs> Somewhere between none and slim. So, so Al, Find look, lend, let's lend us some political wisdom here. Investors <laughs> think that this is a reason cause for celebration. Why else would the Dow be up 200 points, you know, rallying something like five of the past six days? If all we're going, if, if John Boehner you know, to, you know, the way you put it, can barely tolerate what's about to happen to him in December and right. January, and we're going to end up back where we were just a couple of weeks ago, why should anybody be celebrating? 
Well, Eric, you know, you two know a lot more about the investor's mindset than I do. And I gather there's two different schools. One that says that as long as government doesn't cause problems and just gets out of the way, that the economy is doing pretty well and things will be fine for, uh, for a while. The other says government has to provide a little bit of certainty. And at least short term now, we're going to get something that's going to provide some certainty for a couple months.